G'day guys and welcome to our run through of Ramwick for 18th of August, first exciting group one day of the season, Spring Carnival lead in and some interesting races, uh, kind of marred by unfortunately the setup which is a 7 metre rail, good four they're saying, 17 mils of uh, water been put on the track but it's been reported a lot more than that's gone on obviously. Winx is in town and that means uh, they want to put some cushion in the track which is a bit of a nightmare uh, expecting it to be an on pace bias if the track was as it read but uh, unfortunately that's probably not gonna, what we're going to get like if we, it should be fast and uh, near the inside there but I'm expecting to get a few off in the straight uh, probably okay to run on there's also high winds around so the pattern's going to be very interesting to look at, but I, I, I would say that uh, it, it will be possible to run on there tomorrow. And the fence may be a little bit of a an average place to be, possibly. But uh, the winds also dry out that uh, sprinkler system pretty quickly too. So the, and the winds have been around a week, so it's it's a tough one. Um, unfortunately, you know you can't just go with uh, what the what the weather weather's done with this track tomorrow. So going in a little bit blindsided there so uh, anyway we'll go through the races highway to start the day mile race uh, sort of head down the page for this one there does look to be some good tempo on paper well and has obviously found it's it's go it's it's, it's a lead at all cost source now you would imagine uh, draws the middle of the line here which looks ideal and, and works to the front there are a couple that want to go with him uh, Fui Sands, probably the one drawn most sticky, widest of the speed. Evopex wants to come across and find an on-pace-ish position. Needs a little bit of luck. Uh, Cisco Bay kicks up from the inside. Kruanui, something like that. It, it'll be there somewhere. Uh, but Choi wants to find a spot sort of in a, in a middling position too. It's certainly got the fitness on its side now. Uh, the horses I'm interested in here. I'll drag the prices down, sorry. Uh, I think Cisco Bay was a, was a very good effort last start. We'll, we'll have a quick look at its run. Uh, I thought Evo Pex was very good too. We bet against it up at, up in the north coast and, and it went really well. I thought they were the two that kind of stood out. I thought Willander would get enough pressure up to a mile. Comes to an harder race here and certainly could get found out. But Choi comes through that same race and certainly... Uh, Will not find this any easier. And the bottom horse, Panzerfaust, is coming from country form. Uh, had things against last start. Gets up to a mile for the first time. Certainly from a stylish uh, trainer uh, of nice horse. This obviously horse got a big finish on it, but it has to produce that in tougher grade over further distance and it seems pretty short for mine. So Cisco Bay gets the winkers on. Uh, back up to the mile. Certainly hard fit and, and has the right setup to run the mile. Evo Pex is one over the mile, looks to be really improving for the Jim Jarvis yard. He does bring him down here for a, for a picnic, so this horse will, will run well, you would imagine. Just needs a bit of luck early from an, an awkward gate. Uh, Fooey Sands, not hopeless, but uh, certainly suited out to the mile. Just, just drawn awkwardly, can run okay. I can't see too many knockouts. Uh, Willander probably can lead all the way, that's not impossible, but uh, it was a very average race that at one last start off a soft tempo any sort of pressure here or even just running the mile should be enough to make his life difficult and the horse that is the query runner is Panzerfaust but I'm not interested in taking $3.40 uh, 330 360 one place to find out so for me here's Cisco Bay and, and Evo Pex are the main two chances race two won't spend much time on this uh, 2500 meter race I think Just Shine's certainly the one on the way up that gets to the 2,400 metres, which is suitable, um, but doesn't get enough sting out to uh, do its thing. And it certainly was winding up nicely at the end of that 2,000 metres last start. 2,400 does look no issue, but it's never been there before, so it is still a query. Uh, you're still getting a nice enough price. I think it's around $5 to find out. Uh, it's been back to already $4.40. Um, Sayed's going very average. Red Alto won a sit and sprit the other day. I think they'll probably go slow again here, so it's got a chance, but you wouldn't imagine it would get such a soft time. So the Vaucluse Bay, sort of that same form. Uh, 
again. They tie in very well. Rakik's the one now drawn very awkwardly. He's going to get a long way back off a soft tempo. Obviously ran well against a soft tempo last up, but faces the same task. And can it run past Just Shine? I, I lean to Just Shine over Rakik. And then the two on paces, uh, Borkley's Bay and Red Alto. Uh, Screamer has been going very well. A bit unlucky last start, but this rider tends to find trouble more often than not. Next, Terex, uh, the knockout, just lobbing in behind them there and, and has a decent turn of foot late in its races. Uh, the slower they go, the better for Exoteric. Race three, interesting race. Uh, plenty of money around for this horse, Almanzora. Early in betting, and now there's been some money for Brook Magic. Uh, I heard that Almanzora went up a crazy price, five, six, seven dollars somewhere. I haven't seen it, but I heard it went up crazy price. Um, can't find it anywhere there. But anyhow, uh, Brook Magic looks to dominate the tempo here. Back to a more suitable journey. I wish it was drawn outside Gwyneth, but Gwyneth should just roll across. I would imagine there's a heap of pressure. Prince Maytead, Invincible Gangster, uh, will try and slot in with Lemmy Astray. Not a super strong tempo, but um, Almanzora, interestingly drawn here, does it kick up and try and hold a more forward position. Did sit outside the leader on debut and and we, everyone sort of saw it, what it did first up, where it was basically never took part in the race at any stage. Uh, what, what does it do now uh, is the key. And second up from a really long spell is a bit of an issue. Didn't have a tough run first up, which makes life easier here. Comes back in distance. Uh, again, that makes it easier uh, off, a, off a softish run first up. So it does look dangerous, but I do think Brook Magic gets more control. Sharp Hustler was really good late against the bias. Uh, last time, and if you just look at its last two runs, uh, you can certainly say that it's in career best form. It has had 32 starts, 8 wins. It's, it's been around for a long while, and it's only sort of really its best two career runs as its last two, which is quite incredible. Um, but what, what, what are we sort of expecting here? Well, even go back to 2016, it's kind of when it was in similar form. And uh, you're expecting it to get back and, and have to chase a, a pretty fast horse in front of another horse with a nice turn of foot in Amazora. So not an easy task. Uh, McDonald obviously takes the ride on Amazora too, which gives it its chance. Uh, it does look two main winning chances. Uh, sharp pass or the knockout. No value here for mine. Uh, there was a bit of value in the early price of, of Brook Magic, but that's kind of gone. Race four. First of the group races. Group two for the three-year-old. Phillies. Interesting map here. It's obviously come out that Ahud is being given the option to be ridden more forward with the blinkers coming off. Has trialled up well in Melbourne. Jumped out well in Melbourne. Does look ready to go here. Uh, ready for profit is the leader. Blinkers go on. And lightly raced horse. Didn't handle the wet track its first time. So uh, it's interesting to see how 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 uh, Pardon me, how um, firm the track is here. If it's soft, the softer the worse for ready for profit, but uh, we'll give a good sight. You would imagine Adamina possibly gets outside the leader, a secret lady, I'd imagine, will take the sit on ready for profit, and Merrill would be happily to take the cover from Adamina. So I'm not sure where they sort of, when they give it a chance to go forward, or who, it's only if it kind of jumps in front, I would say. Otherwise, it'll try and slot in a midfield position. Uh, the, the draw's not ideal, but if you go back through its form, it's just got such better form than these horses. We're talking a, a blocked and unlucky effort in the gold slipper where it probably should have won. Then back onto a dry surface, 1,400 metres, held up hopelessly, lost all momentum, picked up in two strides and was unlucky to be missed the 100-1 the winner there. But that, that winner came out and ran well after that, so... Uh, it's all about whether this horse has come on. It doesn't look to have grown a whole of a lot, but it does have plenty of the, on these horses on exposed form, and they have to turn it around. Uh, Fiesta draws one. I'm not sure if that's a positive or a negative. We'll sure find that out by this time tomorrow. I thought for two's the one that's trialled up like it's ready to rock and roll here. They've really they've given it a 900,000 metre trial. It's the one tuned up, ready to go. Um, so it's back here, it's back last in this trial. But you watch what it does when it, it gets, sees a bit of daylight, really gets a rev up, but it really does show a nice turn of speed late and, and really does charge through the line. Exactly what you want to see uh, does come down the better section of the track there, but still, this horse is ready. It's being primed and should run well. Uh, who the obvious from 
the main danger for two, uh, just two closes uh, here. Race five up and coming stakes. Interesting race, going with one of the hard fit runners here in Master Ash. I think it's just got a strong fitness edge, even though it's 35 days since it's last seen. It's got a strong fitness edge over most of its main rivals, which are first up, uh, in my opinion anyway. The, the, the interesting form lines here will sort of go through. We'll talk Master Ash. If you give its first up, when totally it's not a 1,000 metre horse, wasn't in the right spot, and then... Uh, Mad bias for me. Went straight to 12.50, worked hard in front, kept going. Then came out and was beaten by a really smart horse in the fire trap last time. Held the burnham, did control the tempo there, but uh, did a good job. Went back to the trials. Looks to have improved, if anything. Now back to 1,300 uh, from 35 days. Looks perfect setup for me. Uh, I think it will lead and give a, give a good sight if that's, a, if that's a, you know, a possibility tomorrow. With the wind and the track and what things are going on, if, if it's okay to be leading, I think this horse gives a, it gives a huge sight. Uh, others in the betting. Uh, to go from the top, Encryption's first up from a spell. I didn't really love its form and its first up, uh, first preparation. 119 days since it's last seen. Gate one, is that okay? Will it box seek? There's a few question marks about this horse. I don't really want to knock it. I think that's probably about its price, uh, $9.00. Ira Kanji's a horse I've got plenty of time for. I think it draws ideally to be in a challenging position and can run a race. I see it got out to sort of $17. That was a big price. Uh, $13, $14 seems far closer to its price. I think I got about it marked about $9. Spin was taken to Kembla for a, an easy kill last time. Certainly a professional type. Uh, certainly can improve off that and is a player here. The Enzo probably needs further and and if it won here, it would be a little surprise, but it's got ability. A military zone sprinted really fast off a, off a slow tempo last start and ran down Danui. It's hard to make a case for Danui uh, against military zone. You'd expect it to have more improvement, and uh, even though Danui was only having its first start there, it sort of controlled things in front, skipped away, had the race won, and, and military zone was still able to beat it. So with it here, a race where it doesn't look like it's going to control, uh, you'd expect military zone to be very hard to beat again. Meeting it at uh, set weights for even beating at home last start. Uh, let's have a look at the weight. So it drops uh, four kilos and Denali drops four. So it's meeting at set weights, same weights for beating at home last time. Smart is an interesting horse up from Melbourne. Hasn't really come up against a hard race yet. Sat outside the leader and did a good job in a two-year-old maiden at sale. Over 1,200, then ran into a walking race at, at Sandown Lakeside last start with that crawled and zipped home, and it was a pretty solid win. Definitely can't knock it. Draws ideally. Uh, hard to really line this horse up because we haven't seen the bottom of it yet. It has a winning chance, no doubt, but uh, has to prove itself and has to come up here and do it. Uh, Denali, as we've talked about, has good ability, but certainly needs to improve, and Altair, uh, the form's been... Franked from charge, obviously wasn't given the greatest ride first up and can improve 11 to 1300. Uh, now draws uh, poorly, uh, negative rider change. I've got to risk it here, uh, even though it is open to improvement. Uh, for me, Master Ash, on an each way basis, uh, as long as it's okay to lead, I think Eric Kanji's the overs and military zone should run well. Um, main query runner, smart ear listen. Race okay, six week stakes, won't spend too much time on this. Uh, used to be the Warwick Stakes, uh, 1,400 metres. Winks has obviously been given quite a good rev up in its trials and, and does look ready to go. Uh, how close it can settle in the run is important. Uh, interesting here that we've got quite a few leaders all drawn inside. Uh, classic uniform is not fast enough to cross these horses. I'd imagine Cabeza de Barca probably leads, uh, if not sits outside Religious Five. You'd imagine that Oriental Runner just wants to sit in behind them and get the toe. Uh, the map here is interesting that Kementari looks like if, it, if it, they're a little bit positive early, they can certainly cross the likes of Unforgotten and Winks, Invictus Prince, and slot straight in behind the speed. So uh, certainly the edge to Kementari from the map perspective, uh, you'd expect them to want to be in front of Winks. It's your only chance of really beating her. Um, Dagento is the one who draws awkwardly and not sure where it gets to. And we've got Ice, uh, Ice Haze High and Libran stuck sort of out wide. So... Uh, looks a, a, 
a middle a middling tempo probably you know maybe they might go a little bit quicker than average for a 1400 meter weight for age race which is usually a slow tempo but i can't see them completely breaking the clock wink certainly is the horse to beat there's no doubt about that uh, they don't put her on a racetrack unless she's ready to go kemantar is the horse that she comes up against uh, that you would expect is still well and truly on the up obviously beating three quarters of a length uh, back second up last time in on a softish track this time i reckon he's been set for this race and i think uh, on top of the ground certainly his go and he, he he's going to run an almighty race of uh, I'd rather be taking seven dollars in than a dollar ten winks, but I'd rather be, you know, dollar ten winks, dollar twenty winks doesn't excite me ever. So, um, if you're going to have a play in the race, it's something small on Kemantari. I think there's no doubt about that, or maybe Kabiza de Barca the place. Race seven, super keen on one here, but again, the pattern's the worry. The horse is Siege of Quebec. I know it looks like it's been pushed out in its trials, but it just finds the all perfect race here. I wish Radiant Choice wasn't in the race because it's probably a bit of a nightmare, but even if it rolls forward, I think Siege can sit outside it, put it away on the turn, and probably creates more of a problem for Laura Main if Radiant Choice holds it out. Condo Heroes is the wild card, especially with Jamie Innes to ride. Can he hold the horse? If it gets running, then that's probably the only other query against Siege of Quebec. I think that'll probably be to his detriment, but maybe not in a huge way because Laura Main may be fitness uh, vulnerable first up even though it's only had 84 days between runs uh, and had two trials since then so i think siege just gets a chance to control the race he, he had a, a very nice gallop between runs on a saturday there and he's and he's trialed up quite positively i think he's well and truly ready to run the 1200 and you know that he's a tough fighter that'll that'll give you a side as long as that uh, as long as there's not going to crazy bias uh, against him couldn't really find a danger uh, with confidence outside of La Romain. I thought Three Sheets was going extremely well and could be forgotten runner here at odds and could run a place. Toshio County, story of this race is absolutely no speed on paper. We're talking I am Cold Play possibly going to the front now in the Wally Yard. Uh, had been retired to stud but now racing for him. Trialled up very quietly, ridden in both its trials. Who else goes forward? Sharpness, maybe. Egyptian Symbol's one that could be easily racing far more prominently this time. We know how good a turn of foot she has. She certainly looks well and truly up to this grade. And she, if you forgive that run last time when she was knocked from pillar to post, uh, there's no reason why she can't be clearly the horse to beat here. Uh, I'm Cold Place tried well enough, and if it races forward, can certainly run well. Zestful draws the right gate, 38 days between runs, uh, like the trial uh, between, uh, likes his track, sorry, uh, and the draw helps, as you said. Uh, 98 days between runs for payroll, uh, probably needs further than this. I thought Lover Lover's trial was extremely good, uh, does draw awkwardly uh, in the middle of the line and probably gets midfield at best. If she settles in front of a few of these, she can be dangerous. The toy is uh, much better on wet ground. It has trialled well if she pushes forward from a wide gate. She did show a bit of speed in the trial, but it was a very slowly run trial. Uh, she can be dangerous. Insensata gets the, the negative rider, and up to 1,400 metres is a bit of a query off her to 1,200 metre runs. Can settle closer, and her best can certainly feature. Smart Amelia is probably the other one that looks to be going well enough, but again, one dimensional gets back and, and gets a negative rider change. So uh, for me, Egyptian symbol, clearly the horse to beat. I am cold play. Watch the betting very closely with this horse, especially late. Very dangerous. And Lover Lover and Atoya are the two query runners. First up, last race is extremely difficult. Uh, 1,400 metres again. Kaonic was extremely positive through the line, very well ridden by the, the young fellow Sam Weatherly last start, found the fast lane along the fence, but if you sort of watched it around the bend, he put about eight on him around the back turn, uh, now four, to, four weeks between runs, and that's probably the only reason I can entertain it as a, as a favourite um, over 1,400 metres. Um, you'd expect it to be better off fresh uh, to stay at this distance, certainly it looks like he's looking for further, really, a horse with gears that winds up. Shogun Sun's going extremely well up in Queensland. Needs luck from the gate, but can finish off. I'm really against gate one, but he, if he gets unimpeded run and can continue his momentum, he's, he's going to be hard to beat. 
best guess has been given poor odds uh, his last couple and, and can improve but probably needs to. A uh, good fellow the same, poor rides recently, can improve, knockout chance, uh, this horse Mils, Milsian down the bottom, uh, looks a very small horse but ready to go from its trials and can run a race, draws a wide gate if they're coming down the outside, it's dangerous, um, who else we got here, Suchet was very good, ridden cold first up, certainly looked in need of at least 1400 metres, maybe even further and uh, it was only an average race there so he needs to improve a little bit and the top one is a very big query and watch betting closely 285 days between runs since best of days raced over in Europe and resumes here for the Godolphin team has trialled up quite nicely uh, and draws positively so a race of many chances for mine I think Koenig certainly the horse to beat do I want to take $2.80? No uh, but there are many chances here and, and many query runners and it's an ugly race that I'd be going wide in and the quaddy best of days can win, Suchet can win, Kaonic good fella, uh, risking the pinnacle, risking onslaught, Shogun Sun can win, Best Guess can win and Mills Sean can win, opposition if it gets a run has trialled up well enough to do something also, I like it when they trial up in Brisbane and send them down here first up, it's a good sign to how they must be going. Uh, not a straightforward day, hopefully... Um, the track doesn't play too radically and we can get some decent information out there. I'll go through your Gandra, uh, Kembla and a few other places. There's a very nice horse resuming in the first, having its first start at Canberra, uh, sorry, it's uh, Kembla called Litigate, Lituate. Uh, it's a good often horse. It's, um, it's quite short, but it's probably a multi-banker down there for those playing. Thanks, guys, and um, come back to you with more in the morning. Cheers.